Hi everyone, we are live at five. I'm Paul Juan Torek. And I'm Ryan Lee Gilbert. What's the date, Ryan? Do Today know? is the ninth. I think it's the eighth. eighth. It's the eighth. <laughs> oh, it's post uh, post election day. Oh yes, it is post election yeah, day, absolutely. and that's why we have Max Crum here. That's why we have. <laughs> that's why we have a great guest in Max uh, Crum. Max yeah. Crum, who we all love, who yes. I've known for ten years now, who oh. is starring in Hot Mess off mm -hmm. Broadway at the. Theater Center. I feel like I have to leave the, the, the pause for yeah. the for Snapple at the <laughs> Theater Center. <laughs> well done. Yeah. Anyway. Um, but we have news. Big news. We do. Big yeah. monkey news. So big, big gorilla-sized news. King Kong. We've been hearing about King Kong. It was a huge thing in Australia. It's coming to Broadway. We got dates, finally. So it's going to the Broadway Theater, which uh, Miss Saigon will exit January 14th, 2018. And then King Kong will begin previews October 5th, 2018, and it will open on November 8th, 2018. And a little recap, this is directed by Drew McConey, Olivier Award winner. Um, and it's the book is written by Harry Potter and the Cursed Child's Jack Thorne. Music by Marius DeVries and Eddie Perfect. What a great last name, Eddie Perfect. Um, and the gorilla is 20 foot high and 2,000 pounds. This gorilla. So that's, it's a puppet. That's it, this huge. It's a puppet, yeah, it's a, but we've seen yeah, video. Like, yeah, of this it's amazing. Team. It's incredible. It looks I mean, amazing. Yeah. I don't know how I'm going to make it through a season that has Moulin Rouge and King Kong in it because those are two of my favorites. Those, yeah, it's I be, love it's, the King Kong yeah. franchise. It, it's great. Yeah. I'm really excited. Oh, yeah, I for love. This. I even love the uh, the Peter Jackson movie. I love, I love the Peter. Yeah, what do you mean you even love it? Well, I, it, gets a, love it gets a lot of crap. That oh my god, because it's like Naomi Watts was robbed of an Oscar nomination for her work with the monkey. Yes, agreed. Thank you for agreeing. Yeah. Um, Lin Manuel Miranda. Who? He he was you know he's he's known for Hamilton, right? He's, and he is doing Hamilton again. Can you believe it? I think we've been waiting to find out if yeah. he would perform in Absolutely. Hamilton again. It's not the movie, although I'm sure that's going to happen someday. Uh, it's the Puerto Rico production. Um, it will play at Teatro UPR at the you know Universidad de Puerto Rico. I just I decided well to just go there yeah, um, in San Juan. From January 8th to the 27th, 2019. Wow. So this away. is um, after we already have King Kong and Moulin Rouge. <laughs> this is a while away. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, after, of course, Maria, uh, Lin-Manuel Miranda decided to make the announcement early, quote, to send a bold message to Puerto Rico that, that they will recover and be back in business stronger than ever. So Absolutely. this is going to be a huge event. Yeah, three weeks uh, only, though. Yeah, it's going to be really great. And of course, the song, Almost Like Praying, is, has been a chart topper and raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for the Hispanic Federation. So that's exciting news. Yeah. Thank you, Lynn Manuel Miranda, for all that you're doing for Puerto Rico. Absolutely, and, um, and, and Mary Poppins. When are we going to get more more Mary Poppins stuff? I feel like we haven't. Oh, I don't. I don't know. When does yeah. that open? I have. I, I don't know. Anyway, we'll we need, to find I want to see more. I want to see. <laughs> if, I know I just, our news yeah. editor Andy would know right Sorry. off the top of his head. <laughs> Bee Gees. Have you heard of the Bee Gees? Sure, you have. Mm. Um, there is a uh, the Bee Gees musical in development by Universal Theatrical Group. This is Universal Studios. They bought all the rights to these artists and movies and are now turning them into musicals. Um, this, the Bee Gees, consisted of brothers, Barry, Maurice, and Robin Gibb. Um, and they were huge in the 60s and 70s. Uh, Barry Gibb will serve as an executive producer on this project. There are no dates, there's no cast, there's no none of that yet. Um, but all of their big hits will be involved. And this project joins a long lineup of shows already based on popular artists and groups, including The Temptations, Cher, Tina Turner, and Donna Summer, which are all coming our way very this soon. This is crazy. I mean, we already had a Bee Gees. Are you? I was going to say it. Like, are well, you we already had a Bee Gees musical. Hello. It was called it's Saturday Night Saturday. Fever. Yeah, this is not Saturday Night Fever. This is not Saturday Night Fever. I know it's not, but this I'm saying that was the a Bee Gees really good are, are you a big... I agree with you. That's why I was confused today. Because I was like... Oh, no, no. This is, I think, a bio show. Yes, this is a this bio is the show. The, the, yeah, the story, story of is, those brothers. This is their story. But yeah. Saturday Night Fever was fun, too. Yeah, absolutely. James Carpanello, Paige Price, Orfe. So, I can't have you, all that stuff. Anyway. That sound you hear is all of your parents clapping. Speaking about of this, musicals, yes. I like Memphis. Yes. Chad Kimball <laughs> is, of course, currently in Come Fly Away. Come From Away. I know. I said it on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, we used to always do that before we knew what Come From Away was. Anyway, uh, and he was Tony nominated for Memphis. Absolutely. He played Dewey Calhoun. And uh, they're having a reunion concert at Feinstein's 54 Below. And he will join original cast members Cass Morgan and J. Bernard Calloway for 54 Sings Memphis. It's a one-night-only concert 
February 4th, 28... Wait, it's booked? I, okay, I thought it was like next week. <laughs> February 4th. February 4th, 2018. They, I just feel like they announce things so early now. Yeah, well, Ryan. I mean, there are a lot of Everything's Memphis announced, fans, so or, they need a lot of time to, you know, get that staffed up over at there. At 54 below? <laughs> <don't> they, <laughs> they have to build the set? Anyway, uh, it'll be awesome. This is a great show and great music by Jody Pietro and uh, David Bryan. Uh, I don't think Montego Glover will be able to well, be there. Well, additional be- casting will be announced. But she's in Chicago she for Chicago. a year doing yeah. Hamilton. So I she mean, would this have is to, one night. She would have to take the red eye. <laughs> Maybe she'll be yeah, there. You know I hope what? she's there. Anyway, uh, it's February 4th, 2018, 7 p.m. and 9.30 p.m. And I'll probably see you there. Yes. Jonathan Groff. Heard of him? He was also in Hamilton. Wasn't he, he just in our <laughs> office? He was just anyway, here. We'll You'll have to find out later. why. Uh, but Jonathan Groff was named Out 100 2017's Entertainer of the Year. I didn't know they did that. I thought they just picked like... I didn't know either. Was this right. a, this year first time? But this isn't the Bachelor list. No. No. These That's are, different. This is, this is a celebration of the most You don't have to be single to be on this list. No. Okay. They're influential LGBTQ And this people. is great because of Mindhunter, which yeah, we both absolutely. love. absolutely. Huge, amazing Netflix And what show. a great moment because he's playing a heterosexual character, which is, is, you know, amazing. And mm-hmm. really no, shows. He's, got, he, yeah. he's incredible in it. And it's already got a second season. Yeah. What uh, A few other favorites have been honored by Out 100. Andrew Rannells, who will be back on the boards in Boys in the Band very soon. The Torch Song Trio, Moises Kaufman, Harvey Firestein, and Michael Yuri. Uh, Jen Colella in Come Fly Away. Come From Away. And of away. course, they took a picture of her on a bicycle. Of course, she's she loves so. Yeah, she's, she's very wheels. always bicycling around the city. Uh, Benj Pasek of Dear Evan Hansen, Sean Hayes, John Waters, Bill T. Jones, Nathan Lee Graham, Paula Vogel, and Randy Rainbow. Randy Rainbow, yes, blowing up. <laughs> well done, it. congrats, Max Vernon. Max Vernon, Max Vernon. Vernon. yes, absolutely, oh, okay. yes, okay. absolutely. Right. Congrats yeah. to all I'm of sorry. these wonderful LGBTQ people of the year. Yay, out list. Uh, we need our own list. What should we do? A list of we should. Let's, we're like gonna come up with a list. <laughs> um, Laura Bell Bundy. We know her from yes. Legally Blonde, of course, and she was just in The Honeymooners mm-hmm. at Paper Mill Playhouse. She is doing a Starry Benefit concert for women's rights and health. This is, this is happening great. on Monday, is that Monday the 12th. Yep. Uh, Double Standards, it's called. It's set for Town Hall. And, oh my God, this an list amazing of list of people. Get ready. Women. Sit down. Women. Get ready. Uh, they said they're duetting on uh, popular jazz standards. Jesse Mueller, Katie Huffman, Lena Hall, Orfe, Adrian Warren, Danae Benton, Judy Kuhn, Sarah Bareilles, Ingrid Michaelson, Rosie O'Donnell, Sierra Bogus, Liz Calloway, Eden Espinosa, Anna Gasteyer, Leslie Kritzer, Morgan James, and Leslie Margarita. Sorry to your last Leslie. <laughs> um, what a crazy list. This is nuts. That's a crazy list of people. 100% yeah. of the proceeds will benefit the ACLU, National Breast Cancer Coalition, and Planned Parenthood, New York. Um, and it is presented upon the 100-year anniversary of women getting the right to vote in, in New, New York. York. So yeah. what a great, what a great That's thing. That's amazing. I'm yeah. so excited. I hope somebody videos that, and so I will get to see it. <laughs> um, Cher- speaking of benefits, and uh, Cheryl Lee Ralph, who you may remember from Call Me Madam, the Broadway.com video blog, of backstage course. at Wicked. Legendary. Um, absolutely. She, her Divas Simply Singing benefit um, is going to honor Todrick Hall, and it will feature Jennifer Lewis from Broadway, Hairspray. Um, this is the longest running musical AIDS benefit in the U.S. It's their 27th annual fundraiser for the Diva Foundation, D-I-V-A, which stands for Divinely Inspired victoriously aware. <laughs> it's great. Uh, the event will be produced by Cheryl Lee Ralph, and uh, Todrick Hall is this year's recipient of the Diva Foundation's Vision Award. Vision Award. Yeah. I like that. And, uh, yeah, also on the site, by the way, Waitress Stars, uh, Jason Mraz and Betsy Wolf saying Bad Idea at Live with Ryan and Kelly. You can watch that on the site right now. Something else is going on the site any minute. Show people with Cheyenne Jackson. Yes. So check Fantastic. that out. And that's it for me. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. We'll be right back with Mr. Max Crum.
Sideways Come From Away is a best musical winner all across North America. This stirring and inspiring musical takes you to a place you never want to leave. Celebrate the best of humankind and the best in all of us at Come From Away, the remarkable true story of the small town that welcomed the world. For Carol King, finding the top of the charts was easy. Finding her own voice was beautiful. Beautiful, the Carol King music. Hey guys, we are back on Live at Five with a real hot mess, one of our favorite hot messes, it's Mr. It's Max true. Crumb. Hey guys, hello. Now appearing in the off-Broadway comedy, yes? Yes, romantic comedy. Yeah, romantic com, a rom-com. Yeah, a rom-com. Is that, is that a rom-com or is that just a film term? I don't know. Oh yeah, no, I think rom-com just sure. means romantic comedy. Okay, yeah. okay, good, okay. Yeah. How you doing, Max? I'm good, like thanks for having me, thank you so much. Nice jaunty hat. I have it on because I didn't do my hair. <laughs> so what does it look like under there? Like this. Oh, that's all right. It's cute. Yeah, yeah you pull that off. Sure. Come on. Me too. Me too. You I'm work. You, you you make that work. Yeah. Um, so you're in a new show. We love it. We like yeah. it when you're on the boards. Yeah. Um, Hot Mess. Mm -hmm. You are in previews right now at yeah. the Theater Center, at the which is right near us, right, up, right on 50th and Broadway. That's right. Um, that's right. No one can tell that from watching this, but we're very close to it. We are. You just rolled out of your dressing room and came here. It's true. Um, so how is it? What is it? Tell me, it's tell great. me all about it's it. It's great. Um, so Hot Mess is a romantic comedy that goes both ways. Oh. Uh, that's the tagline. Okay. Uh, but it's it's about <laughs> it's about a couple, uh, a young couple. Lucy and it's DeVito. Kind of Lucy DeVito, who yes. is absolutely hilarious. Of the DeVitos. Guys. Yes, of the of the American of the, dynasty, yeah. <laughs> the DeVitos. Yes. Um, and uh, it's, it's basically about me coming out to her as bisexual at our six-month anniversary dinner ah. and so it's it's basically about sort of dealing with all of that and what happens and comedy ensues but it's mostly about their relationship interesting and about, yeah so it's 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 a topic that's not really covered uh in no, you're anywhere right. male you're right. bisexuality in terms of you know being accepted or just sort, yeah. of, just sort of uh on the forefront i guess so you know? she, well, she's got a lot to deal with. She does. <laughs> she does. Uh, but yeah, that's that's basically what it's about. But it's it's mostly just about these two people. It's written by two stand-up comedians. So and we both play comedians, and okay. I do. I, you know, and there's stand-up in the show. I do a set in the show. Oh wow! So it's very. Have you I mean, done that before? I haven't. It's actually very exciting. Yeah. It was something that I've always wanted to do. I've always uh -huh. thought about it, and so in this context, I'm glad that I get to do it. Yeah, that's cool. You know, yeah. So wait, is this like their story? The the uh, the the the, the writers. Story? It's Loosely based on um, experiences that they have may or may not have had. <laughs> <laughs> you know. is, it has, how has it been? Uh, did you know Lucy DeVito? I but didn't. I'm I didn't. assuming uh, chemistry is necessary. Was yes. there a chemistry test? Uh, there, there wasn't, but our chemistry is fire. Like it's, it's yeah. actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's rare that you get excellent uh -huh. chemistry like right. the chemistry we have. Wow. Like we take things to like a whole another level of sort of intimate and funny and it's just it's it's a lot. We we want to make people feel a little uncomfortable with how close we are and I think we do that. It's a nice small theater too. Yeah, I mean, it is. Yeah. It is it is. Yeah. So how's life? Good. Yeah. Life's good. Just happy, grateful to be, you know, doing a play. I yes. get to rest my voice. Right. Okay. But I do wish I could sing. I feel a little bit like a fraud. Like, I can't trick people into loving me by singing. <laughs> but also, like, sometimes I sing and people don't love me because everyone's different and everyone's tastes are different. Oh, I don't know. I think you're pretty irresistible on stage. Now, we, la now we last too. saw you on Broadway in Disaster. Yeah. Was that, was that fun? Yeah. That was oh a crazy, of that was course. a crazy show. Yeah. That show was so. Matt oh Rodin saw it like every week. Yeah, apparently. That's right. Yeah. I can't even believe I got to be in that. I was. He's so that. He's that weird groupie at the stage. Tour. That's, that's right. That. Also, just so you guys know, Matt Rodin loves Jason Mraz. I <laughs> okay. Um, Fun see? fact. So so. Um, <laughs> but disaster was great, and I can't even believe I got to be in it off Broadway, and I can't even believe that I got to be in it on Broadway, and it was and just totally different so much experiences. Fun. Yeah. I mean, the off Broadway show was the off Broadway show was kind of like. We have two hundred dollars. Let's make yeah, a show. And then yeah. the Broadway show was like, we have way more than that. Let's yeah. make a show. But let's still make it like scrappy and fun, yeah, even exactly. though we're on Broadway. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But it was just so much fun to be in the room with all those people. I yeah. loved learning from all of them. Who was like so, the person that you were bugging out about the most that you got to call like a co-star? Mm, probably Adam Pascal. Yeah, because we played best friends. You know, I and know. There was like a point where I remember we were in rehearsals, and our director Jack Plotnick had to be like Max. 
stop looking so longingly at Adam. I kept being like, sorry. Uh, it's just like, I'm Mimi. Like when he yeah, holds well, me Well, I always arms. thought Mark looked at Roger a little too yeah, longingly right, too. Right, right. I mean, you're, you're the, you were the Mark. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, exactly. But I felt like I was Mark because we were in the Niederlander Theater and I was <laughs> right. best friends with him. And then I died in his arms. So I was like, I'm Mimi. Uh, and then Adam was just so funny. He would be like, yeah, all right. Like it was just such a funny. I'd be like, I'm sorry. I just I'm, I keep and I kept like touching him. So I'd be like, All right, all right, guy. I mean, sorry. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, he was the one that I think I geeked out the most over. Yeah, because I just love him. You know. Yeah. Um. So it's been ten years since Greece. I just realized that's right. That. Oh my god. Like ten year anniversary. What'd you do on the ten year anniversary? Anything? Um. I took a bath. I don't know. Took I don't a- remember what I did. <laughs> uh, I think I was. What was I doing? I think I was doing a show called Beatsville in Florida. Uh huh. Like during oh, yeah. the ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Year, Like right when it yeah. came out. How was that? I was great. Fo- I was following oh that on social media. Beatsville's great, you guys. What it's, is it like? What it's, is it? Is, it, is, there sh- like, is it going to yeah. happen again? Or? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, Beatsville is basically it's about beatniks in the fifties oh. in the East Village, and beatniks are like the kids that are not cool. They're like the hipsters. They're not the beats. They're the kids that have no talent and are pretending to be cool. So it's about like those people oh, okay. in the fifties in Greenwich Village. I thought beatniks were like extremely cool, but maybe no. That's beatniks from... are the kids who have no talent and put on turtlenecks and bongos and cigarettes and pretend they're cool. Oh, okay. Like hipsters in Brooklyn. Right. Were you like that when you when you were like? No, I'm actually cool. And well, have, but like, what talents. about when you were like no, in I'm school? Uh, um, like, were, did you were you immediately part of the, one of the cool? I bet you kind of were because uh, you're like because your because your personality is so like. I was never focused at school because I always did rehearsal, and so I had terrible grades and was never present in school. What was your like big shining um, acting role in school? In school, like the big moment. Cool. The Tony I played moment. Cornelius in Hello Dolly. Oh. I also played Paul in 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 Course Kiss line? Me Kate. <laughs> I got to sing. Line. I got to sing <laughs> Too Darn Hot when oh. I was a sophomore, and uh-huh. that was cool. Yeah. Is his name Paul? Is that I don't know. Name Paul? I wanted you to be Paul in the Course Line, but yeah. it does the drag model. But yeah, no, that was that was like my big thing at high school you uh-huh. know, when I got to do that. So when you went to that, I'm sorry, my voice cracked on that question. It sounds good. When you went to that uh, that that Greece, uh, mm-hmm. you're the one that I want audition, mm-hmm. Open right? Call. You did you have like a lot of confidence walking into that? You were like, I, this is so true story. Okay. I where did you audition first of all? I auditioned in Los Angeles. Okay. Um, and I found out about it the day before, and so I had gone out with my friends and I couldn't really sleep and I had stayed up in fact like all night mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, and I kept thinking, oh, that thing, that thing is like tomorrow, is it? And I looked it up and I was like, it is. It's and the line starts in two hours at six a.m. So I was like, I'm gonna go over there. And so I just grabbed two Red Bulls and like drove myself there and like got in line and slept until like 8 a.m. when they started like, Mm -hmm. you know, and I was 10th in line, I think. Ashley Spencer was first. Wow. Online. First. And she was ready. Like uh, that says everything ready. about Ashley yeah. Spencer. She was Ashley like Spencer the, was ready. And she was tap dancing like <laughs> at six AM. And then I think Laura Osnes, if you guys knew who that is, they know her. She was like four people away from me and then she, they all oh, got she auditioned too? Okay. Yeah, and we met the very first day oh, wow. once those okay. people got because I asked her to borrow her chapstick and she was like Okay, Weird. but let me. And then my roommate at the time was actually a friend of hers from high school, and so we connected on that. Oh, and they did theater together. Wow. So yeah, so I just I randomly auditioned on such a whim, not even thinking anything would come of it. Like, I remember that footage because I was I was really into that. I was really into that show. Yeah, it so was sad there haven't been more of those. Yeah, I think I ruined it. <laughs> What does that mean? <laughs> you ruined. No, it. I don't know. I don't know. I think they were going to do one for Annie, but then they just didn't want to do that to little children. Put them right. through that. But everybody from the reality yeah. show has done really well. Yeah. I mean, Kate Rockwell is in Mean Girls. I know. I know. She no, it's was a, it's serious, ama- Sandy. It's they'll amazing. Do a, they'll do a, a Hamilton then. Yeah. Do they it. absolutely will. And what was your, um, what, 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 I know they'll say, what were you? I was Slacker Danny. Oh, right. right. And I asked Kathleen Marshall. Beatnik Danny. I was like, yeah. I was like, why am I Slacker Danny? And she was like, because we couldn't call you Stoner Danny on TV. <laughs> and I was like, excuse me, I've never. <laughs> Oh my God, that's amazing! Yeah. All right, we have questions. We oh, have questions. Really? Um, okay, we have questions. It's very important. Um, yeah, and everyone, I'm sorry. You're right. Dreamgirls is not the Diana. Actually, I mean, it is about Diana Ross, but it's not officially. Did you know that? Uh, oh, never mind. Uh, um, <laughs> uh, 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 did you? Sarah wants to know. Did, I'm sure you did. Did you get to see Laura Austin in Bandstand? Uh, I did. Yeah. She was excellent, and I saw it at Paper Mill, and I just also. I saw it there too. I mean, she's just. 
Uh, she's just pedigreed for it, and I love watching her on stage yeah. do anything. I thought that show was like such fire. It was so good. Yeah. Like, can we try to spread some negativity about her though? Like, there's what's, nothing. Like, something so really many annoying people about do this. Her. So many people are like, "Tell me, tell me the one right. thing." And it's I like, know. guys, she's the most Christ-like person you <laughs> will meet. That's it. And she, I think the reason she's so magical is because her. <gasps> on a stage is more genuine than anybody's could ever be. It's all about that. Like it's her wonder, that, like her that <gasps> sense is like of wonder. less tainted than uh -huh. everyone else's. Yeah, you you're know? right, the sense of wonder. And she's super talented and has an amazing voice. And I know. it's like super How about when gorge. she flipped upside down? That was ridiculous. Yeah. guys. Um, Elise wants to know if you could start any show that's currently on Broadway, which show and role would you choose? Star in? Yeah. The, uh, the Marvelous Wonderettes. <laughs> no, uh, probably. I feel like you can make that happen. Waitress. I would want to be in Waitress, but as Ogie. Ogie, okay, yeah. I've gotten to. Uh, yeah, you'd be great. No, listen, I've That's a been great up for it for the original cast and for the tour. I got to be in it. I'm too tall, but I would love. I'm a oh. totally different take. I do like a deep Southern Ogie, and he's oh. like doofier and a little oh, dimmer. That. But you Look know, they you. like it. They just don't. Add a new layer. Cast me ever. <laughs> But it's okay. That's uh, ridiculous. Yeah, I would love to. Oh my gosh, I would love to be in Waitress. I would love to be in, um, what, I mean, I don't know. I, there's, Raul and Phantom. Yeah, or just like uh, <laughs> any, you know, I'd love to be in SpongeBob. That'd yeah. be fun. Yeah, I have lots fun. of friends in that. Yeah. Yeah. But most importantly, I think I'd be a good Roxy Hart. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Or like Willy Wonka. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 to all this. But here's the thing is I mostly do like original things. Yeah. And so I would love the opportunity to do a dusty old musical. Right. No, I'm kidding. Because it's a joke. You, it right. was like being oh. No, I got, I got it. No, I got it. I would love to do Hello, Dolly, but. Yeah. You know. There's a lot. Yeah. I would love to be a Book of Mormon or Hello, Dolly. Honestly, I think I'd be really good Elder Price. Cunningham. Cunningham. Which one? Elder Cunningham. 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 Yeah. The doofy one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. It'd be different. Yeah. Yeah. It would. It'd be like stoner. I'm just no. I love that she. I love that. I like know. that's your energy, stoner. Mm -hmm. Stoner well, listen, energy. It is, I guess. <laughs> I've never in my mean? life smoked. Cassie wants to know what's your favorite show tune of all time. That's a hard question. All time, probably yeah. "Hold On" from Secret Garden. I guess it wasn't oh, hard. Wow. I, you like went right there. I listened to that when I'm sad. Hold on. I remember uh, Alison Fraser. Alison Fraser. Yeah, her voice was so. I used to. <laughs> it's like where does she? Yeah. It's like yeah. <laughs> I can't. I can't even find the placement. Did you see Daisy Egan do it? Yeah, and well, that I didn't trippy. see her, but I trippy. I'm friends with Daisy Egan. Oh, I love excuse her me. so much. I'm friends with Daisy <laughs> Egan, so um, let me take this. And one. now she's in The Humans, right? Yeah, yeah, on the yeah, tour. yeah, yeah. She's, uh, yeah, uh, but I look up to her so much. I love that soundtrack. That's like one of the most formative soundtracks for me. I don't know. I love it. You can't it say so soundtrack, much. dude. In certain circles, they'll like, they'll knock you down. I don't need to be friends with those people. <laughs> like, if they're judging me, like, by, I'm just kidding. I'll say album, cast album. Is cast, that it original is? cast recording. ABC. Original cast recording. Who are these people that Tim are Tim Federley's like, watching, and I'm sure that's Tim what he would Federley, He would not make that mistake. You guys go buy his books. Oh, so good. There's things I could tell you guys about Tim Federley. He, he well, he, what he, want, what he said today is, hi, Max, please follow back, all caps. <laughs> So there's that. Uh, he said that he sees you at Schnippers in Midtown a lot. What's your favorite dish? I can't afford Schnippers anymore. Oh. That's right. Yeah. Um, no. Tim will buy you something. Probably, what do you want? Probably, uh, yeah, yeah. Send me Schnippers gift cards, guys. No, just kidding. <laughs> uh, um, chicken fingers and fries. Or like a chili cheeseburger. Yeah. You know? That's like a good cost. Do you yeah. like chili cheeseburgers? No, I, I'm, not, I'm not into things that are that wet. I can't. Okay. Like I don't like sauce on my sandwich. Okay. Like it's really? No, I like, like it dry. dry. I like it a little dry. Oh, oh, Matt, oh, Matt Roden agrees. We dry. finally agree on something. I'm just no, kidding. I don't like egg sauce. Yeah, see that. If the, you had a sauce. sauce, though, what would it be? Ketchup. Okay. Ew. This is the riveting like a toddler. interview. Toddler. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so okay. Do you eat on stage in hot mess at all? Is yeah. There any food? I do. Yeah. What do you um, eat? I I eat sherbet ice cream Ooh. and popcorn, mm. and I drink water. Okay. Yeah. So That's it. you're secretly by in the show. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then things develop from there. Yeah. Uh, it's basically like my journey to telling, you know, being comfortable telling her. It's, yeah. It's so, sort of when do you 
tell someone that? When is the and is that necessary that information? Up? Exactly, exactly. Right. And yeah. that's sort of the premise of the show is if you are a bisexual man yeah. in America, mm -hmm. in the world, right? Mm -hmm. Is it necessary to tell a female if you're dating her, or even a male if you're dating a guy yeah. that you've dated women? Do you say, oh, yeah. I, you know? And it's sort of that gray area that it's also masculinity is sort of like a very big thing in the world. Yeah. And it's, yes. it's sort of like deals with that. It deals with like people's sort of um, judgment. Yeah. I think, it, I think it's really interesting. In topic. a nice, funny, fun, uh, yeah. r accessible way. Mm -hmm. It sounds like it could be a TV series. Yeah. I'm into that. It totally could. Yeah. And our chemistry is like. I think, you fire. I think you said it was fire. Is it's fire. I'm starting fire and then also like Quan. Instead of Queen. Quan? Oh. Yeah, that's a new thing. Like, yes, I've been Quan. saying Quan for years. That's yes, actually Quan. old for me. Is it? Yeah, that's, that's like, oh, okay. that's very Paul okay. 2011. But oh, no. I'm glad you found it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one. So glad, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, Kurt said, here come the Schnippers gift cards to buy the wet and dry combo. Okay. I don't know what that means. That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. Um, Kurt's a comedian. Yeah. You know who else is a comedian? These two people that wrote Hot Mess. There we go. And Lucy DeVito. She's pretty funny. She's hilarious. Have you met uh, the parent, the parental figures? No, yeah. I have not. Um, but have you asked I'm her about excited. her parental yeah, figure? I mean, or you just like play really cool? Like, yeah. She's just Lucy DeVito. Well, we've like. talked about it. Uh, we've talked about them. She's very open and cool yeah. about it. And I'm, I mean, I was, I'm such a huge fan of both of her parents. You yeah. know, they're like American treasures. Yes. So of course I, I you know, I waited a little bit. I didn't want to like bombard her because right. I assume that's what everybody does, but it's not, she's like, I don't know. She's so cool about it and they're cool. And it's like obvious she comes from them. You know, it's just yeah, yeah. that kind of, they're a cool family. Yeah. You can tell. You I know? love it. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, need to come see this show. Please do. You open on November 16th. The 16th. At the, Theater Center. At the Theater Center at the Jerry Orbach Theater. At the Jerry Orbach, Jerry Orbach, he, the, yeah. He, he what? He was great. He was yeah. Billy Flynn. Now, the, yeah. the original Chicago cast recording. If yeah, you my dream to, role. Yeah. Your, Ro Roxy Hart. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my dream role is actually to be hosting Live at Five. We can make that happen. Wait. Yeah, so. Are you willing to pay to do your dream role? No, yeah, I mean, yeah. You, who do you, you want to host? Who would you want to interview? Who would you want to interview? I got it. Okay, thanks. Who would you want to interview? Don't, when there's technical issues, you just keep going, Max. Oh, okay, you don't that's have my to, first like, lesson. Highlight it. I would want to interview... <laughs> <laughs> I'd want to interview stage managers of Broadway shows. That would be your go-to... Yeah, or like stage door people, like Rose from the Schubert. I feel like nobody's ever seen her out of there. She might be a ghost. She might be camera shy. Yeah. Sometimes okay. I don't want to be on camera, Maybe taking like, questions from fans. Maybe I could be like... A liaison to go speak to uh, stage managers. We could do like a stage manager week, and you hosted by Max, Max Crum. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> sounds <laughs> right. <laughs> and we eat and we eat schnippers. Yeah. So you want to host? Okay. All right. <laughs> You're like, okay. We'll no, no, no. We'll have, have to we'll have to figure something yeah, out. I guess. I mean, you really put me on great. the spot yeah. on live TV. I know that's the point. Okay. Because now I get to do it. Because <laughs> like you look like a dick if I don't get to do it. You know what I mean? <laughs> So true. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Thank you for coming by, Max Thanks Crum. For having now you me. go off to your. Do you have a show tonight? Yeah, we have yeah. our second preview. So people can like immediately like see you live. Yeah, come see it, you guys. In a couple hours. You Please. can just go see him live. Please come. Is it up? Is it upstairs? Is an elevator yeah. involved? Yeah, there's an elevator and stairs. Uh, it's on the third floor yeah. at the Jerry Orbach. It's above the Dwayne Reed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's above the Dwayne Reed. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't hear things from the Dwayne Reed, like, no, it's soundproof. I don't know. It's just funny that it's near Dwayne Reed. I mean, what other the theater could say that? Do you hear things? In... You're I, true. It's true. It's true. It's true. There is like a secret entrance from the Dwayne and then Reed. That like long if somebody would just too, push the entrance. door open, they could come in. There's the a theater. secret entrance to the Dwayne Reed. This uh, is yeah. what I was trying to find out. See, yeah. similar to like the connection between the, yes. those theaters. Yeah. Which ones is it? The tunnels. The tunnels. Yeah. Yeah. And you did the Fantastics there too. So I you, did. You know it well. Have you I ever do. snuck into the Dwayne Reed? Yeah. Like stolen Twizzlers and I don't snuck steal. back into the theater. No, but I sneak. <laughs> places a lot. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You guys, fun fact, Paul's not wearing pants. <laughs> Just kidding. So true, because it's Wednesday. Well, yeah. <laughs> no pants Wednesday, and because I'm a hot mess, so, you know, he wanted to. I'm also dressed really casual. I apologize. No, you're not. Uh, Ew, I'm dressed up. Normally, I'm, normally I'm in the... Very okay. Christmas. Okay, anyway, this is just... This is just rambling. This is this lovely. <laughs> Come see Hot Mess. 
I Hot can't mess. wait to be hosting um, this new Stage series. Stage manager week host- on Live Stage 5. Week. Maybe actually between Christmas and New Year. Can you run the board too? Because we're off yeah. that way. We're off. So you can just, if you can turn the lights on. Yeah. Sh- just yeah. go. Absolutely. <laughs> the fans will love it. Okay, everyone. Go see Max Crumb of Hot Mess at the Theater Center. It opens November 16th, and it's hilarious. I haven't seen it, but I, I trust that it's hilarious because you're hilarious, good. and oh, I enjoy you. Thanks, man. So enjoy it. It's a rom-com. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Cool. Thanks for watching. Bye, we'll you guys. We'll be back tomorrow at 5 o'clock with another great guest.